So when I first got here, parking lot, icy and slippery. I have traction control of my SUV engaged a couple times on the road up to Ray Benson. I wasn't sure if I needed to do Yak Tracks or Snow Shoes. I prefer the Yak Tracks because it's easier to walk around. So deployed my Yak Tracks, came over to where I am now, instantly saw in a second here when we veer on the trail that it's way too thick for Yak Tracks. Went back to my car, put on my Snow Shoes. Now here we go. You see these blue diamonds indicates we're on the trail. The footprints of previous snowshoers is also a helpful indication. So we shall see how far we go today. Today is one of those massive contingency days. If I did everything, I had my druthers, I would do 9.5 miles, plus 600 feet elevation gain, I hit all three shelters, Brandenburg Butte Shelter, Island Junction sh Shelter, and the North Blowout Shelter. But depending on conditions, that may not be practical. So I'm gonna start going towards the Brandenburg Butte Shelter and make some incremental decision making based on the conditions and how I'm doing slash feeling. So let's get to it. So if we get some beautiful views of Mount Washington, and as I said, it up to three shelters, so look out and hang out and explore. Let's get our snowshoe. We're looking at Hey Rick Butte. Not like, hey Rick, what's up? More like the straw cousin. Hey Rick. This snow park starts at 4,800 feet. So, just a couple hundred feet shy of Alpine. We'll definitely be climbing into the Alpine today, depending on the exact route we take. One of those snow parks that flirts the sub-Alpine and Alpine. Look at those clouds straight ahead. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's pretty epic. as my snowshoe falls off. Just got started and I wanted to highlight this beautiful weather formation. Look at this. The clouds are pretty ominous. Let me stop and pan around and take a look at Hayrick Butte, as well as the trail we've been hiking on. Right now, we are headed towards Brandenburg Butte and Brandenburg Shelter on the side. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I'm loving this weather formation, this gray cloud. Look over how absolutely beautiful that looks. Look at that. Pan up and show you the ominousness. Probably in for some rain and or snow today. It's one of those days, it's actually the warmest it's been in a while, where it's high of 43, low of 31. We've had quite a cold spell here this year. We were down to five degrees, negative five wind chill there for a week or two, and heavier than normal snow due to La Nina. This is the warmest week we've had on a bit of a warm front, so I thought I'd take advantage of that. Come do a Ray Benson. Ray Benson Snow Park is the premier snow park of the Santian Pass area, which is Pass Sisters. This is Willamette National Forest not the Chutes National Forest. 
being in Central Oregon, lion's share of the area is the Chutes National Forest, but if you come up to the Sandy Pass area, you are in Willamette well, country. Kind of interesting the way all these trails intersect. See, this is obviously a snowmobile trail. This is a heavy snowmobile area. Um, lots of snowmobilers using this as a base camp for their exploration. We intersect them quite a bit. Want to be mindful of them safety wise, but honestly, it's so loud. I don't, highly unlikely you're going to be surprised by a snowmobile. So I don't think accidents between hikers and snowmobile happen very often. Almost never, really. Just be practice situational awareness, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Try to be the least amount of bouncy I can with my snowshoes on. Would have much preferred to be in the act tracks, but snow is just too thick in some sections. I want to post hole all the time. This initial section is a bit of a narrow forest section for the most part. Getting some peekaboo views of Mount Washington, more the silhouette at this point. Looking through a narrow path of pine trees. See a little bit of a hint of the morning sunrise below off in the horizon. We're gaining a little bit of elevation. Here at Ransom Snow Park. As we go through this narrow pine passageway on South Loop, heading towards Brandenburg Butte and Brandenburg Shelter. 4,900 feet, give or take. Elevation. Wearing my snowshoes, not my yak tracks. So it's making me a little bit more bouncy. Opted not to bring my trekking poles. Didn't feel like I needed them. Kind of a cool perspective. You're getting a little bit of a nubbin of the Mount Washington complex straight ahead in the horizon. This is, uh, gotta say, pretty beautiful, quintessential Central Oregon winter snowshoeing. A thick snow, freezing cold national forest, glowing green with pines. And we've got mountains off in the distance, coming up to more of a viewpoint of our trusty friend in Mount Washington. Some beautiful views in Mount Washington. Oh, that is beautiful. Pan over and continue to show Hey Rick Butte. Again, that's H A Y, not What's Up Rick. Oh, that is so beautiful. Look at that. Something pretty darn magical about this area. It feels good to get out here in the snow, in the forest. If you are a lover of nature, a lover of wilderness, a lover of forest, then you get it. Something just good for the soul about being out here in the forest. Gotta kind of be careful with your footing on a few of these sections where you can very easily take a tumble. It's surprisingly steep gradation. One thing you got to be aware of when you're hiking in snowshoes is that 
because of the weight of them, you have to be a little bit more conscious of lifting the snowshoes completely and raising your feet. When you're in normal shoes or you're even at tracks, you kind of get away with a little bit more of a casual stumble step. You don't want to lift your leg too much and just kind of glide across the ground. You can't really get away with that with, the tra with the snowshoes though, because your snowshoe will catch and you'll trip. So it gets me every once in a while. If I'm lost in thought and I'm not using proper technique, I will trip a little bit. So trip there. Look at that. That is beautiful. But the funny thing is, if you actually drive around to the north side of Ray Benson, there is actually a trailhead up there. Like there's a big sign and clearly there's trail access. But they don't, nobody goes up there. They don't pave it at all. I guess, sorry, I should say plow it at all. So it's, it's like six, eight, ten feet of snow. In fact, that's where a lot of the uh, plower snow gets discarded. So even though in theory, you should be able to start a hike up there. You don't really want to start a hike up there because you're going to have to climb six, eight feet of snow. So take the path of least resistance and start at the south side. And this is the steepest section we've had. Like straight down. Let's look back at it. You can see it's a little bit of a hill. When you're going down that hill, it's actually very steep gradation. Probably the steepest gradation of this whole hike. If I'm able to do the whole nine and a half mile loop, I would like to do, where you hit three shelters, Brennenberg, Island Junction, and North Blowout. It's about nine and a half miles, about maybe about 600 feet elevation gain. A lot of machinations in the trail. We'll see if I can do that logistically. I'm up for it, but depending on how much trail has been broken, conditions, it's very possible. Let me tell you how this works. Sometimes at these snow parks, you look at a map and you see all these trails. And you're like, oh, look at all these trails. But then you come here and you see that people only really do like one section of it. So it's very possible people only make the run out to Brandenburg and back. And then the northern two thirds of the whole snow park is at full snow. Nobody's broken it. And if you want to be here, you can break it, but breaking trail in snowshoes, especially if you're in a few feet of snow, is very exhausting and laborious. So to do that for two, two thirds of nine and a half miles, is a bit of a high ask. And the juice probably, frankly, isn't worth the squeeze. That's, that sounds like a, it's a pretty exhausting experience. So, hey, if you're looking for some tremendous exercise, great. But my point is, best laid plans. Look at the map, come up with some contingency plans. But then when you come into the snow park, the situation on the ground may dictate your path for you. A good example of that is like Swamp Lake Snow Park down in more in the Bachelor area. A lot of times the only area that's grooved is from the trailhead directly to Swampy Shelter and back. If you want to do any of the other trails, you're going to be breaking trail the whole way, which is fine. You can do that, and I've done that before, but it's just a different experience. If you're, if you're with a group and you want more of a casual, fun experience, I guarantee you members of your party are not going to want to break trail for a couple hours. They're going to get miserable quickly. Um, you're with a bunch of superstars that are all about it then by all means go for it but so the unfortunately the popular traffic patterns of an area often dictate the likely path we will take so quite confident this little this trail will be here till Brandenburg shelter but we'll see about Island Junction and we'll blow up so I could do up to nine and a half miles and up to 600 feet. I would like to capture all three of the shelters. So if I don't do the other ones today, I will come back and do them another day. They're gonna be caught one way or the other. Claypool Butte Trail. We're staying on South Loop. See that? We've already done 0.8 miles. Left Ray Benson Snow Park 0.8 miles back. And now we're heading towards Brandenburg Shelter 2.1 miles. 
Claypool Butte Trail is that way. That is not the path we're going today. It's kind of interesting because the forest tells a history if you know how to read it. The height of the trees, species of the trees, even the markings on the tree. Kind of get a ecological history of the area just by looking around and understanding the trees. It's kind of dorky, but if you're into nature and science, it's kind of cool. I'll talk about my fluid management for this hike. Since I'm hoping to do 9.5 miles, 600 feet elevation gain, three shelters, I did bring a full battery of food, drink, and snack. I've got, on the, on the drive here, I drank a Powerade, sugar-free Powerade, like a big one. I've got another Powerade in my pocket. Also got a rain energy drink, a little caffeine hit, sugar-free, gotten into those lately. So I have two drinks, a sugar-free caffeine, vitamins, vitamin B supplement drink, and a sugar-free Powerade. And then for snack, I found this great keto blueberry granola at Costco. So I got a baggie of that, probably 200 grams of that. And I've got a few pepperoni sticks. So I got granola, pepperoni sticks, and two drinks. So I'm pretty darn well appointed. I actually don't expect to eat and drink all that, but I'd rather bring a little much than I feel like I wish I had more. So most of the time I get home and I've only eaten or drank a little bit of it, but I like to give myself the option. It's kind of interesting. If you look at the sign, South Loop goes both ways, like the vortex of the universe. If I turn left here, Brandenburg shelters 2.1 miles. If I keep going straight, it's 1.9 miles. Well, since I'm trying to get to the shelter, I think I will pick the shorter route. I'm a mile away from Ray Benson Snow Park. But I haven't been hiking that long. I'm already a mile in. It's deceiving because when I first got to the snow park, I actually hiked around the parking lot of the snow park just to confirm that the north trailhead wasn't accessible. So that probably added, I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And then when I started, I put on my neck tracks and got to, the, got to a thick section and went back and changed my snowshoes. So I would estimate I was probably 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 in before I even started. So if, if today's a 9.5-er, it's really going to make it about a 10.1, 10.2-er just because of my initial overhead. I probably wouldn't recommend walking around the parking lot like I did. That was probably a little at the top. I just wanted to check all my trail points before I committed to the south loop. And it was, as it's always been, completely clogged up north. So probably no value for you to do that. Just assume that the south loop is the way to go right when you get here and don't burn any of your energy on that. I'd also just deploy snowshoes. Don't do what I did and try the act tracks. It's not going to work. This is a high enough snow zone that there really isn't much of a window, if any, for you to be able to get away with the act tracks. Unless you don't mind post holding quite a bit, then by all means, but if you're trying to avoid that, then Start the south loop, deploy your snowshoes, and you'll already be 0 0.6, 0 0.7 ahead of me. If you develop a deep appreciation and love for the forest, for wilderness, for nature in general, if you go on a hike like this, every single step is magic. Admiring the pine trees, the snow, just everything about the forest is beautiful. So I highly recommend taking that perspective if you're going to be a wilderness adventurer. I caution people against what I call a dangled carrot mentality, and that is they don't really care about the trail, they don't really care about the forest. All they want to do is get to the end point, to the roll center of the Shitsi Pop. And to me, I don't think that's the best way to view it is I don't think in that case the juice is necessarily worth the squeeze. If you're not enjoying every step, then why are you doing it? So, life is a journey, not a destination. Okay. 
deep appreciation of nature is a wonderful thing. Also makes this always kind of a soul and life affirming experience to come out in nature. Enjoy the trees. Enjoy the wilderness, the forest, the mountains. I just enjoy everything. The bounty of beauty and majesty in the area. Quite remarkable and special. And come immerse yourself in it. It's not to love about that. And there's another blue diamond. We weren't concerned, but it's always good to validate you're on the right track. But this is a pretty straightforward hike, especially with the existing grooves of the snow being matted down. It'd be pretty, pretty hard to get lost. Right on the At least on this Brandon Ridge section, it might not be the case if I decide to go to Island Junction Shelter or the Northern Blowout Shelter. I have a feeling those trails are going to be more difficult. I'm going to have to break trail if I want to go up to those. So, thank you being a judgment call. I've broken trail many a time and it is exhausting. So, also, if it starts raining, it might influence my thought process. But right now, we're steady. No precipitation. Oh! Look at that. That's a nice little shot of uh, my Washington, a little peekaboo going on there. Mount Washington is our eye candy in this area. Here's our Butte eye candy. Hey Rick, Butte. As we continue along our narrow pine passageway through beautiful Atlanta National Forest. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is the mighty Mount Washington. All of her mountain splendor as we continue to hike along South Loop. Bit of a clearing area, making the snow in this section a little thicker. Isn't the canopy of trees to block, obscure, and obstruct the snowfall. A little shot of the mountain. And this particular open section is the gift that keeps on giving. Look at that. It's quite beautiful. Still see a slight glow of the morning sunrise. Sunrise about 7.40. I got here, well, a little before 7.40. A little bit of a burnout and some remnants of the sunrise over there. Off the seeing... Mount Washington. That is our main alpine eye candy for this hike. We'll be getting multiple shots of it on the trail. Our passageway is getting narrower. This is a very beautiful section. Pacific Crest Trail. Great for summer, not what we are doing today. There's the beautiful Pacific Crest Trail. A little signage. little connector to the other side of Pacific Crest Trail. If you're not familiar with the PCT, and I don't know how you couldn't be, but one of the most epic hiking trails in the world, going all the way from basically Mexico to Canada, through Oregon, Washington, and California. All right, so here's our update. Ray Benson Snow Park, 2.1 miles behind us. Rainberg Shelter, 0.7 miles ahead. So we've made it to a Wizard of Oz style intersection. All sorts of different ways we can go. It says South Loop behind us. We're 2.4 miles away from Ray Benson where we started. Brandenburg Loop is a half mile that way. South Loop is that way. I'm gonna go Brandenburg Loop because I remember it on all trails, that wasn't my plan. Looks like it's got some foot traffic. And maybe most importantly, gets his views of the mountain. Hello there, Mount Washington. 
a really beautiful area. Look at that. The beautiful Mount Washington. Glad I picked the Brandenburg Loop because this is the side that loops closer to Mount Washington. If you happen to enjoy a good mountain view, definitely want to take the Brandenburg Loop side over. So straight ahead is Brandenburg Butte. Peak of that, it's about 4,900 feet. Could be. Ooh, probably the best view in Washington we've had. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Looking straight ahead at the beautiful Mount Washington. That is our Alpine eye candy at Ray Benson Snow Park. See the gray clouds moving quickly to the left, partially obscuring the sun, the shining sun fighting for sky supremacy. Oh, that mountain looks so beautiful. It's like marshmallow white. The top part of that is just thick, gorgeous, glowing white. Oh man, that is beautiful. I find it interesting that on the right side of the mountain there, that forest section is already melted. Kind of indicates to me that Snow levels up at Washington aren't that high. If the whole area was one big blanket of white glowing snow, then we'd be like, wow, a lot of snow up there, but not in this case, Jack. Looks like it's, uh, or should I say Washington? Three Finger Jack is in a different section. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Love the sky, love the gray clouds, the sun, the blue, contrast of the weather. Love the beautiful, Mount Washington in all her glorious marshmallowy splendor. Bright white, glowing white, just gorgeous. This area is beautiful. Give you a little shot of the trail behind me, and we'll continue along. We're getting close within a few tenths of Brandenburg Shelter, which is the highlight feature of our hike today. Watching some pretty epic weather sky battle today between the forces of darkness and lightness oh my gosh this is beautiful wow this is gorgeous and a bit of a overlook clearing section I'd say we're in the top zone of the Brandenburg Butte zone section oh my gosh Definitely giving us some pretty nice expansive views. Pretty epic. There's the beautiful Mount Washington. And look at these beautiful sky. Oh my gosh. As I like to say, the forces of lightness and darkness, at least in a weather sense, fighting for supremacy of the sky. Will the rain win or the sun win? Only time will tell. And got some expansive views that way. Gorgeous clouds, some really vibrant colors of gray, as well as the mountainside. I should say Butte side of Brandenburg Butte and beautiful Lama National Forest, all these pines. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to trust the tracks in this case. And the diamonds is two diamonds on this tree behind me. Nothing else. Kind of a Wizard of Oz intersection. Any direction I want. Could have gone up there, but I don't think that's the way to go. I think I want to go down here and going down the mountainside. This is very thick snow. Let me show you what is to my right. Look at that base well around that tree. It's a pretty tall tree. That's how thick the snow is up here. It's a very exposed area. There's just thick snow accumulation. Let's get a shot back at where we're coming from. Thick, snowy delight. One word for it. <laughs> While you're going down it, I might not feel so delightful because it's very thick and arduous to get across even with my snowshoes on. I'm having no trouble with my footing. 
So if you wanted to be a Yacht Tracks warrior, I'm telling you right here is a place where your plan falls apart. Because even with snowshoes, this is difficult. With Yacht Tracks, this is gonna be knee high post holing or farther down mountainside. Hey, different strokes, different folks, but it does not sound fun to me. I would say that as a tip. Trust yourself over the tracks. Because how do you know somebody else wasn't lost or something? So use the diamonds first. Try your own path from the map. And then if you want to, you can use the tracks as a secondary reassurance that you are indeed on the right track. But don't just mindlessly follow the tracks. Because in some situations, that will get you in trouble. We look back. Definitely the hardest section we've done so far. Descending Brandenburg Butte in the snowshoes. Pretty steep angle, very thick. Pretty easily knee high, maybe even thigh high. Or waist high snow in some of those sections. And this tree coming up straight ahead indicates we're still on the right track. Amazing how much easier the flat sections are if we just did a climb down a butte. Now I feel like I'm flying. A lot of pines in this beautiful area. Pretty gorgeous spruce. Oh, I love that. Wowza, look at that. That is the absolutely incredible Mount Washington framed by the beautiful Willamette National Forest. But if Alpine Eye Candy here at Ray Benson Snow Park, I'm gonna do the Brandenburg Butte Shelter Loop, about 5.6 mile, a few hundred feet elevation gain. And you get multiple money shots of the beautiful Mount Washington. Very distinct top. The peak is gorgeous. Very distinct features, bright white, glowing marshmallow. This is beautiful. I love how the peak is framed by beautiful Lama National Forest. This sea of pines. You can see the gray clouds and blue sky fighting for sky supremacy behind it. Lighting it up quite a bit right now. We're getting a good glow of it. Certainly not obscured. Oh, this is beautiful. Something special about a mountain framed by a forest. I'm currently hiking this way and I will be to Brandenburg Shelter very shortly. This is beautiful. I wanted to show you that this is a safety corridor. I'm looking back. This is the way I just came from. I just climbed down Brandenburg Butte. This would be going back up Brandenburg Butte. It's pretty steep and very thick snow, particularly one section. It's knee high, waist high, knee high, thigh high, maybe waist high, and kind of very steep, so very easy to fall there. You can see why they do not want motorized craft in that area. That would be highly dangerous. <laughs> Something about this one pine, see this? Straight ahead in the, right to the right of the trail there. Look at that, it's pretty, uh, it's a fluffy pine. Uh, very beautiful. I don't know, something about it struck me. Forest is beautiful. Clouds are particularly beautiful. One of them days where the beautiful gray clouds and the white clouds and the peaks of the sun and the blue sky ends up being a feature of the hike. It's a having a beautiful day. I like these hybrid days, we'll call them. Ooh, well, I'd be a fool if I didn't capture that. Look at that. That is beautiful. I love you can see kind of the glow of the sun on the left here, the left of the peak. It's moving very quickly. We got our beautiful, mighty Mount Washington. The colors, um, the grays, Light gray, dark gray, blue, white. 
I love these hybrid weather days because the weather itself ends up being a feature of the hike. I mean, our landscape is obviously gorgeous, but sometimes if you just have a bright blue sky, there's less contrast. And conversely, if you just have a gray overcast cloud, there's not much contrast, but you get this watercolor painting effect going on. Look at that. Continue along in our snowshoes. This is down a kind of a little steep section. Watch your footing on this section. The blue diamond indicates we want to go this way. So I will believe it. Not really much of a room trail. I'm basically breaking the trail. It's a minor, minor roof here you can make out, but the snow is a good foot or two beneath that. So not really adding much as far as my traction. I'm going deep in each step. I guess this loop I'm on hasn't been done in a while. It's when I'm guessing. We've got our snowshoes deployed because it's so thick and we made it to the mighty Brandenburg Shelter. Let's go inside and take a look. I think I'm approaching from the oft not approach side, the far side. And look at that. That's pretty gorgeous. Oh, I'm loving that. Let's go take a look inside. Oh my gosh, look at this. We're looking at the world famous Mount Washington. Of course, our Brandenburg rustic log cabin shelter. Scroll over and take a look. We've got what I like to call watercolor sky. This is beautiful. That's Hey Rick Butte. That's Hey as in H A Y, like a cousin of straw, not like what's up, Rick. And let's go inside Brandenburg Rustic Log Cabin Shelter. This is pretty darn epic. Step inside. I got so much wood cut. Oh my gosh. And I love the nameplate, the plaque, Brandenburg Shelter. Love that American flag. And we've got a couple of benches and a hearth, a wood burning stove to stay warm. Avoid the nippy frostbite. And we are here to another junction, South Loop Ray Benson. We want to take that. So there's the South Loop. If you remember Wizard of Oz area earlier, had we taken the South Loop and not the Brandenburg Loop, it would have looped around here. We're going to stay towards Ray Benson Snow Park. Oh, this is so beautiful. Got our blue arrow here. We return through our Atlanta National Forest.
forest is so beautiful. That's the direction we just came from. And this direction we're going. Watching for these blue diamonds. As we continue down the south loop, I'll come over and show you the trail we just came on. We just moseyed through that section. Now we are descending this way. We are on the return part of this approximately six mile, 350 foot elevation loop. Ray Benson Snow Park out to Brandenburg Shelter. We're on the loop back to the main section of south loop. I do have my snowshoes deployed because this is super thick snow. There were frankly some sections, particularly the Brandenburg Butte section, that simply would not have been possible without snowshoes. Could have gone from your thighs to your waist in some of those sections. And without snowshoes, I think the tracks would not have been suited for the job. They're more for icy situation with lighter thickness. This is more of a powder snowy section with maximum thickness, so definitely a snowshoe profile, not a back track profile. Just FYI. Because of that, it's a bit bouncier, and I can do about that. I opted not to bring trekking poles. That was the biggest contribution I could make to the cause, but I had to deploy snowshoes. This forest really is beautiful because we got down that decline. All sorts of pines and there's a beautiful goose spruce. And it's mostly pines and occasional mountain hemlock. This whole hike kind of flirts in the subalpine alpine range. Alpine's 5,000 feet and the snow park's about 4,800 feet. So kind of flirting in the alpine zone. The duration of this hike. This is what I like to call a pine tree passageway hike, where large chunks of it are just beautiful sections like we're in now. Hiking through the forest, a little clearing section that's been cut. feeling, remembering how this map works, that we're going to be connecting to the main trail section shortly. Kind of a lollipop loop. 
lollipop being the Brandenburg Butte and Brandenburg Shelter. Rustic Log Cabin Shelter, definitely the highlight of this hike in addition to beautiful Mount Washington views. So right now we're finishing the lollipop loop. It's raining a little bit. It's okay. Here's my trail. Pretty cool like snow meadow giant over here. Here's the direction I just came from. So I continue to snowshoe. The tough part is this section over here, this loop I'm doing is less traveled. So I'm I'm on my snowshoes, but I'm still having to break trail a bit, which makes it a little bit more tiring. Once I get back to the stick, it's pretty packed down. Last mile and some odds should be pretty quick. So we shall see. Up and look at this epic snow meadow. This is the hill I just climbed up. Very beautiful snow meadow. And this section I'm currently sending is kind of this little butte. Very thick snow. So we got another intersection. We don't want to go that way or that way. That's the PCT. We want to go this way. See a blue arrow there. And let's continue along. We are headed back to South Loop for a quite cool view trail. I did a little off-road action. The trail wasn't very defined as far as the blue diamonds or the footpath, the roof footpath. I ended up kind of blazing my own way for a bit over the Claypool Butte. Probably wouldn't recommend doing that. It's a bit exhausting. A lot more tired than I normally would be on a hike like this because I decided to go find the butte for no reason, really. But glad I got to explore that section. Oh, this is a beautiful forest. Pretty thick snow today in the sections. Oh, all these vibrant pine trees. It's raining, which is only making the pine trees pop even more bright green than they already are.
as we continue along Clay School Loop Trail. Anticipating we're going to hit back up with South Loop very shortly for the final section of our hike back to Ray Benson. Get it back to South Loop. And we are 0 0.8 miles away from Ray Benson Snow Park. Back to our vehicle. Sitting, warmth, enjoy. Look at that. There is direction towards Brandenburg Shelter. And here, the South Loop. Ah, oh, the trail is nice and groomed and matted down, so it's a lot easier to hike. I've been breaking trail the last couple miles. All right, I got a tip for you. So I did Brandenburg Loop, same way it shows on all trails, the 5.8 mile, 300 and some odd feet elevation gain. When you get to Brandenburg Shelter, I kept going on the loop to do the wall at the top. I am now going to say I do not recommend doing that because that section from Vandenberg Shelter back to the south loop I just got back on was by far the hardest section because there wasn't broken trail. I had to like find my own way. That red line, the lollipop finishing of that loop does not really exist. Um, I basically had to break trail for a couple miles, <laughs> felt like, and then I wasn't being very efficient because I couldn't really go in a straight line, so I'm sure I gave up several tenths of breaking trail for no reason. So I'm not going to recommend following the all trails model. I would say when you get back to the Brandenburg shelter, just turn around and backtrack the way you came. I know a lot of people like the loop because they want to feel like they're seeing new stuff, but I'm telling you, that section from Brandenburg Shelter back to the south loop, to finishing the lollipop, there's not really a lot of eye candy. It's just forest and meadows, and you have to end up breaking trail a lot of it. So you don't, you don't really gain much, and you exert a lot more a lot more effort for no reason. So that's not where the value is, in my humble opinion. At that point, turn around, I'd still rather go back up Brandenburg Butte. So there'd be less exertion than what I just did. Look at that. That is Hayrick Butte. A little bit of fog at the top of that. That's pretty cool. That's hay as in H-A-Y, like cousin of straw, like farm hay, not what's up, hey Rick. Um, so yeah, that's my pro tip. Do not all the all trails slowly pop turn around go back up Brandenburg Butte yeah you have to go back up to Butte that's going to be some exertion but you do get good money shots of Mount Washington in that section again and that's still less effort than breaking trail on the other side through random forest and meadows for a couple miles <laughs> so turn around and Go back from whence you came and view it as mountain back rather than a pop loop. That's my recommendation. Do what you want, obviously. Kind of a cool down tree here. Right beside the trail. Very cool. Beautiful forest section. It is raining. We are returning back to the Ray Benson Trailhead. It's in that Ray Benson Snow Park. Our South Loop Trailhead. Oh, this is so beautiful. It is Friday, January 13th, 2023. And 
Officially calling it Corey Knoll Trails. This is 5.8 mile loop and 300 and some odd feet of elevation gain between the Ray Benson exploration, snow park exploration I did, starting with the act tracks and having to go back and my off trail clay pool butte section. Probably did more like seven miles, I'd say. I'll be 500 feet elevation gain. I feel like a couple miles practically breaking trail, so a bit exhausting. I would break this down into two hikes. I would do the South Loop as a hike. Uh, come South Loop to the Brandenburg Loop, and then I would turn around and backtrack that. Don't do the lollipop as the ultra shows you because there's no groomed pack trail and you're gonna end up breaking trail for a couple miles through a nondescript meadow and forest and adds a lot of effort for not really any extra payoff so I would it's still less work to go back up to Butte Brandenburg Butte and it's to break trail for a couple miles through meadows and forests and that has a lot of uphills too so take my word after having just done it and turn around at the shelter go back from when she came back up to Vandenberg Butte. That also gets you to the, the uh, Mount Washington views again, and that's that section is the best views in Mount Washington in the whole area, so you do get a dividend. So I would do that. That's the, we'll call that the south side. It's the south loop, Vandenberg shelter loop. That's one point of attack. Then I would also have a second hike, and that is maybe start in the north section of Ray Benson. I understand there is a trailhead up there, but it, you have to climb up like an eight or 10 foot banked, uh, snow bank to get up to it. But once you do that, and you're on top of it, you're fine. I would go up there and then I'd go do the, the blowout shelter, the north blowout shelter, shelter and the island drinks and shelter as a loop, completely avoid the south part. So and I would definitely do snowshoes on both of them. This is not a Yak Tracks um, snow park. Realistically, it's just too much thick snow. You'll be post holing the entire time if you try to get cute and use Yak Tracks. That's me how I know. I actually tried using Yak Tracks at the beginning part of this, and I quickly realized that that was not going to work. I wasn't going to make it all the way to Brandenburg with my Yak Tracks. So I did like a tenth or two before I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. Went back to my car and switched to my snowshoes was a wise decision because as I got later on I only saw how the snow got thicker and thicker so definitely a snowshoe snow park definitely the premier snow park I'd say in Santee and Pass Sisters area two I think high quality snowshoes can be done obviously a gigantic base camp for snowmobilers I've been hearing them all day in the distance gentle roar of their engines. So those would be my two points of attack. My, I think you can break um, Ray Benson into two snowshoe hikes, north and south. And in the north one, you capture two shelters, the, the blowout and the Highland Junction shelter. And in the south one, you just do the Brandenburg shelter. But if you do those two snowshoes, two pretty thorough, rigorous snowshoes, capture the whole area. You could use in Mount Washington and beautiful forest. And right now I'm headed back. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> 